Hi there and welcome back to Madman. I am Byron. Let's continue exploring, I say. What time is it anyway? 3.30 p.m., okay. What is that? Wool. That more wood. Cut. That happens to be a sheep. Can we shear you? Yeah, more wood. I add it to my stack. I should wait a day until shearing anymore. Fine, let's shear the next one then. Oh. Apparently by clicking on one sheep I shore them all. Okay. What is that? Corn. really reminds me of like Ultima 7 where you could actually you know do all of that stuff you know bake breads that's cool I wonder will it grow again? Or do I have to plant anything, or is it just a one-time event? You harvest the things that are there, and then... That's it. Inventory is getting crowded. What's that? An empty bucket. Could probably fill it. Yes. <clears throat> okay, so Apparently, I created Byron the farmer, and not the monk. But then again, a monk would do that with those kind of things. He's very humble. Not above a little farm work. That's cool. Who are you? Ooh, there's more stuff lying on the floor. I'm rich, I'm rich. Why are you rich? Pirates buried gold all over here. That's what it looks like. Move out of the way. What is that? A gold nugget. You're not going away or what? This is my gold. Oh well, fuck. Oh, now I get it. Funny thing is, I do get another uh, shovel and another pickaxe. That means I can actually sell mine. Don't really need them. They are lying on the floor there. Five gold. It's not like this stuff, you know, breaks. So, that's pretty much it. Let's sell that too. I have a few fish now.
What is that here? Rock pile. Can I use that on a rock pile? Sling stones. Okay. 25. Mm -hmm. Empty. Not quite empty, what's that? 21 gold pieces, okay, I take that. Wait, I can't stack, stack the gold nuggets. Okay. No, thank you. I uh, maybe I should make some bread out of that. Five gold for the gold nuggets. That's cool. And I have like three gold bars. Oh, Fifty per gold bar. Okay. Let's, uh, you know, work on that before we actually sell it. What about this though? You don't want that. Good. A bread Jura, whatever that may be. Oh, let's dig here. Thank you. What is that? This looks like a little house. Is it just me or it's getting dark? Armor by Johnny. Man, I'm bored. Oh, really? Play a game. Who are you? You must be Johnny. Welcome, adventurer. This is a pleasure. Good to see a customer, too. I am little Johnny and proud to be the master armor of Watercross. If you care to see mine goods, please browse the shop. I have quite a lot. Nice shop. This stuff looks costly. Thanks. My stuff isn't as costly as you may think. Yet, as a rule, you get what you pay for, and I'm very proud of my work. Better items usually cost more. I get what I pay for? As a rule, expensive stuff will protect you better, but even simple leather armor can help a lot. I craft quality goods. Anyone can wear my armor and still remain agile. You'd be willing to buy from me? Sure, armor anyway. All of us merchants like to deal only in the stuff we make. It keeps our inventories a lot easier to manage. But that's stupid. You should buy things yet you don't make. It's called division of labor. Do you see many customers? Well, to be honest, business has been slow lately. It seems most of the residents here have... What why, why do you talk like that all of a sudden? Have what they need. But all in all, I'm doing okay. Travelers like yourself help too. The residents really need armor? We have a lot of creatures native to the land roaming about. Some are pretty strange. The residents like to be prepared. You never know when a wear shade might show up. I'll certainly shop here when I can. I'm your man for armor. Pick up any item in the shop to inspect it and I'll make an offer. Drop anything on the barter block over there and I'll see if I'm interested. You sure do make a lot of armor. It's a job, yes. My hobby is archery. I have an idea how I might be able to craft a weapon unlike any other. A magic crossbow I call the Grim Reaper. It's my dream. A magic crossbow? Wow. A sunstone is all I need. With it I can add parts based on a design of mine and make it. Sunstones are made of enchanted silver and silver nuggets are made of silicon ores. You really think you can craft such a thing? Janelle in Cliffside is a crafting master who could make silver from about five chunks of silicon ore. Leondorf on Cliffside could probably enchant it into a sunstone, I hope. One more thing if I may. Actually not. Watch out for monsters. Okay, since you buy armor, I'm gonna sell you some. Wait, what was that? The Grim Reaper. 
Johnny and Watercross wants to make a magic crossbow with which he calls the Grim Reaper. He needs a sunstone for it. This can be made with five chunks of silicon ore crafted into a chunk of silver by Janelle, the shop owner in Cliffside. The silver then needs Leo Dolf to enchant it into a sunstone. And I'm gonna sell you that for 2,543. Cool. And I'm gonna... That's the same. Okay. I was just checking. But I'll sell you this. That's much cheaper. And I'm gonna sell you this. Ooh, that's expensive too. And you're gonna get that too. So if I'm like punching, um, you don't buy that, do you? No. Um, maybe I should get a ranged weapon, or maybe I can do that with spells too. Let's wait a while. Um, maybe I can get a fireball or something, then I don't really need a bow and arrow or something like that. I wonder though, if I would equip a shield, would that be cool? Yeah. Buckler, 110 gold. Okay. Body shield, 5 fucking thousand. And then again a monk with a shield. Looks stupid, right? Kite shield. AC3. AC5. AC2. Okay, let's keep the mining together for a while till we actually have um, some, you know, armor, uh, some spells. Let's see what else we can find. What is that? Just ground. Twelve gold pieces, very good. Much appreciated. Excuse me, it's getting dark. Okay, that helps. What kind of noise is that? Uh, let's... what time is it? Okay quarter to ten. So uh oil, I want oil. Is that was that the oil? Yeah, buy five of those. Thank you. Because I'm pretty sure I will need it in the next dungeon. Okay. Let's rest. And hit points are rising slowly. Who are you? My, but they look tired. Milua, ah, uh, I guess I'm dreaming. Oh, this is, must be my sister then. Tis I, whether thou dream or not. I'm sorry about the old cavern. In my heart I well knew you were but guarding the entrance to that foul mountain, but alas, I was already inside. Fear not, for all will be well. I wish to believe I dream not. Thou wilt find a way to return to thy homeland and set all all right. All all right. All right? Rest well for now. I don't really know. Do, does the you know Doctor Dungeon want you know to use the old Shakespearean English or current English? Farewell, my sister. Dream sweetly.
Okay, that should be enough. Oh, should have just clicked on save. Moving on. Uh, can I shear you again? Yes, I can. <laughs> and by shearing one, I shot them all. I like that. Oh, there are more over here. How nice. Oh, I shot them too, apparently. What is that here? Cloth. Fine cloth. Take that. What do we have here, though? Signpost. Yeah, well, what's written on the signpost? Library. Okay. A tall fellow walks about the library sorting books and keeping his keeping things tidy. He greets you. Please enjoy the library. All I ask of any visitor is to speak quietly to respect the concentration of others as they study. Is there anybody else in here? No, we're freaking alone. Hello, sir. A pleasure to meet you. Likewise, and welcome to the library of Watercross. We may be a bit small, but our tomes contain much information, and reading is good for the mind as well. What is your name? I go by Taylor. Taylor the Librarian. What kinds of books do you have here? All kinds, my friend. Look around. Reading is good for... Good for the mind can give you knowledge that can be quite useful. Could you recommend any book? Oh, I could suggest quite a few, but one such as yourself might find the Adventurer's Guide useful, and make sure to read the one about the Water Witch. The guide sounds useful. It is. Anyone who plans on exploring or adventuring, as they say, would be wise to read that guide. There's a lot of handy information in it. The Water Witch? I think her name is Wendy, an eccentric but friendly girl who lives in a castle far southwest of here. They say she's a master of teleportation. Visit her if you can. Do you do any research? Indeed. My primary research is about a legend of an amazing city lost to time called the City of Gold and White. Some think it actually exists underground somewhere. A lost city? Sounds pretty incredible. Legends say an ancient race lived there at one time. Perhaps they put us here. Where did they go? Is it just a myth? I'm starting to think their city might be more than legend. Hmm, so it might actually be a real place? My research suggests it could be under cliffside somewhere, but the data is very old and the order of centuries, on the order of centuries or even eons, for now the mystical city remains a myth. One more thing, Mr. Taylor. Apparently that's it. Take care and keep reading. Okay, let's take a look. Uh, so there are like five books here. Interesting. One section of this books, of this black book states. Low on sling stones? No problem, just keep a pickaxe handy. Look for rock piles and stalagmites to get free ammo. Look out for Mariah. Thieves beware, unless one is quite skilled, Mariah, the master of justice, will find you and sentence you to the terrible blasted lands. Adventurer's Guide. So, apparently, if you click on the same book several times, the contents change. Keep some food handy. It can restore a little health if you're low on potions. Take a fishing pole with you for endless food. About monsters, rare shades, fire elementals, dwellers and gazers are the worst. Look out for them, but gain a lot of experience if you defeat them. Herb tip. Moon shadow grows mostly in mountainous areas. Wooden doors and magic doors. Not a mystery. Anyone visiting the towns in our land has surely noticed the magic doors. In the old days, doors were made of wood. Wood can decay, and many there were who scratched, scratched pictures, words, and even profanities on the doors. Even children would often carve out chunks of wood. In those days, there were made, was a major guild, and the mayors of the town sought them out for a solution. Putting their minds and skills together, they devised the idea of a magic door. Made of a multicolored metal, these doors are opened simply by touching the spot in the center which causes the door to zip itself right into the floor. A mere touch of the floor spot with one's foot and zip, the door would rise back to the closed position. 
Being made of metal, no pranksters could harm these doors anymore. Eventually, every door in the land was replaced by these new marvels. Interestingly, the mages even included normal locking mechanisms. This, of course, means a lock door can still fall prey to a skilled lock picker. Yet it also allowed for the use of certain keys on the unpickable, on the unpickable models. No, now, mystically warded doors are another matter entirely beyond the scope of this book. This is stool, okay. Wendy the Witch of the Elemental Plane of Water. A traveler reports an interesting experience. Walking the beach far to the southwest of the main towns, he found a curious teleporter pad right there on the beach. Of course, he had to step on it. Imagine his surprise when he found himself teleported south across the ocean to what appeared to be a castle grounds. The whole place was surrounded in water, connected by bridge walks, and for a minute he thought he was in a river view. But the stone structures and small castle nearby told otherwise. Carefully he walked right in and was greeted by a very lovely but silly girl with a blue circlet, or circlet around her head. She asked him if he wanted the broom, calling him my pretty, and and seemed rather happy for the company. She giggled a lot and said, "All she and said all she will give him is a couple carrots, nuggets, and some other junk in some chest she had." Apparently, this had something to do with the broom which he had seen in an unreachable area outside. This water which keep, kept taunting him to give it a try, but he had no way to get to the broom and was left eating the carrots. Thinking her mad, he quickly made haste to the teleporter pa pad and found himself back on the beach. A most curious tale. So, broom, carrots, nuggets and some other junk. Hmm. Interesting. More books. Lockpicks are handy. If you know the true power of the lockpick, not only can it pick a lock, but these versatile tools Work on trapped floors also. We already had that. We already had that. Mystic Shrines of Skill. For thieves? Most people know about the Shrines of Skill in the land, and there are tomes that speak in greater depth about them. Leodolf the Archmage in Cliftiff is said to have such a book. In short, they can magically raise one skill in many areas, for a price. But what of the somewhat shady skills like lockpicking or direct detecting secret passages and traps? These are the fault of the thief. It would appear that one of the mages who made the shrines of skill set several thief-friendly shrines deep in the great desert. Perhaps his thinking was that only one mad enough to brave the terrible wastes of the desert deserves to increase these skills? Rumor has it that there are indeed such shrines deep in the desert, but it hasn't been verified. Deep in the wastes of the desert, they say, there are even shrines for stealing and picking pockets. One wonders why anyone would steal in a land where people share freely. Folks are happy to share all the items they have around the house, personal things they keep in containers or in their pockets. It makes one wonder why a crook would steal from a chest or crate from these generous people, much less try to pick their pockets. That's the thing, though. If you take a look at the stats... Um, I've already tried one shrine in the last video, and it seems it takes money. And if that's all it takes, and you can, if you have enough money, you can raise your skills to the maximum on those shrines, maybe it would be a good thing to increase bartering first. Because with bartering you get more money, and with more money you can increase the other skills, if you happen to come across a shrine. Hmm. This may be an interesting option. Dungeons, monsters, pirates and treasure. It is well known that many ancient caves and dungeons can be found in the land. A daring spelunker can get quite wealthy considering the many treasures found in dungeons across the land often stashed there by pirates and sometimes forgotten. Mountains and places with rock, lots of rocks and cliffs are good places to look for dungeons. Each beach will sometimes have a rock formation that actually leads into a cavern. There is one of this kind known to exist in Watercross. Several can be found in the far north of Riverview, and of course Cliffside is well known for its dungeons, especially a mysterious one in the center that appears to have a sealed door, the orange of origin of which is unknown at this time. Dungeon crawling may have its rewards, but it is not without a great deal of danger. I gotta drink something. Most caverns have, a, have quite a variety of denizens, both natural and otherwise. 
It is definitely a good idea to explore such areas well prepared for battle, as such is quite likely. It could seem that the creatures that dwell in dungeons usually prefer the natural caverns carved in rock over the ages. The other kind of dungeon one can find appear to have been made on purpose. Some believe these were made by fairly recent ancestors, while others suspect these mine-like caverns made of rock similar to that in a castle are far older. These kinds of dungeons are well known for their many traps and secret passages, clearly the work of some intelligence now forgotten to the land. It is the wise adventurer who goes properly prepared into these dangerous places of potential wealth. One must weigh risk versus benefit. Yes, and what do we have here? The Lost Despondent Adventurer's Guide Feeling low in your attempts at adventure, finding yourself always short of some supply, ready to cast away your adventuring garb? Fear not, this guide will show you that true adventuring is not merely about saying hello sailor to every boat you see. Perhaps the most important thing to an explorer is equipment. Nothing is more frustrating than being lost in a dungeon having forgotten some extra lamp oil. Which brings us to what just might be the most important item to have along, a lamp down, a lantern and lots of extra oil. A good lantern can light up not only the darkest dungeon, but also a reasonable area outside when it's dark. There are also other items an aspiring adventurer should keep in his pack. Certainly a small tent could be, should be carried to rest and replenish one's energy and magical energy called mana. A pocket watch is good to take along. Likewise, keep a sextant handy in a cave? In a dungeon? Hä? <laughs> Especially if you wish to revisit an area that was hard to find in the first place. You want a calendar to keep track of days and months. In, in a dungeon? I mean, okay, if you have a watch, and then a calendar would work too. Bringing some food along is also a good idea. A warm wool coat is essentially of traveling to the ice and northlands. Armor and weapons are a no-brainer. Danger looks everywhere. Likewise, it is good to have some lockpicks and knowledge of herbs and potions. These are crucial to stock up on if doing some any serious exploring. A fishing pole is good to fish for food. If you're looking for metal ore, take a pick along to chop out ore veins. The pick can also be used on piles of rock or stalagmites for free sling stones. Happy adventuring! Okay, thank you very much. So, what do we have here? This is the tailor. Oh wait, is that a dagger? That's a dagger. No wait, go across the edge. Come close if you want to talk, okay? Poor Annie, talk to the mayor. Oh nice, a fishing pole. Town hall. Are you the mayor? No, you know, apparently you're not the mayor. <coughs> Mystic shrines of skill, as noted by Leodulf of Cliffside. Our forefathers who came before us left a great legacy in our land, that of the mystic arts. Magic, that uncanny power that rules the cosmos, was greatly respected in those days, and many there were who devoted their efforts to mastering this noble craft. In time, it became difficult to teach so many that chose the path of the mage, thus the great ones devised the mystic shrines of skill, wherein the devotee who has required the basics from a master could evolve his practice to a higher level. They say nothing beats experience in the real world, and this is as true for magic as it is any craft. When one has some experience, the intense golden altar inside the shrine can determine if he, this experience is enough to allow the supplicant to raise his casting skill to a point. So it's not just a matter of money, it's also a matter of experience. So maybe I shouldn't put stuff into, into bartering then. Interestingly, the ancient mystics devised a clever way to transform gold into the needed energy or perhaps into their pockets, as the altars require a donation of 100 gold pieces to use. What only one need only use the altar and the shrine with the proper golden experience and the skill will increase. It is advised to use these often. So what about other skills, one asks? Shortly after the shrines were made and many were made many in the land approached the wizards and asked if perhaps a similar system could be devised for other skills. Fighters, paladins, rangers, bards, druids, monks, ninjas and even the thieves approached the wizards asking for their help. The wizards agreed. 
So now we have many shrines across the land, mostly in towns, and each has a sign on the wall to identify what skill it improves. It is an excellent system for those seeking to improve skills, no matter their chosen profession. Okay. Is that a chest? It's locked. You see a very worried woman pacing the floor. She seems quite distraught. Forgive me, stranger. I fear for my daughter Annie, taking her way to that awful cave north of here. She breaks down in tears. You're the, you're the mayor. Don't you have a town guard to bring her back? Are you sure she was taken? My Annie would never enter such a place of her own volition. She must have been stolen in the night by creatures dire and of ill intent. Oh, what will I do? Where is this cave exactly? Just north of here, along the edge of the beach. It must have been there where they took her. The monsters. What will become of my dear Annie? Be strong. She may yet live. Dearly, I hope so. I fear for the worst. None can dare the foul dungeon and live. The creatures that dwell within are dark and fearsome, set in ways most evil. Very not, I shall find her. Oh, please try. Okay, we have a new quest. Annie's adventure. It seems the mayor's kid is up in the dungeon north of the town hall. I doubt the monster took her as I've never seen any this close to town. She probably went exploring. I suppose I should go up there and see if I can find her. Wait, are those books? No, it's just a shelf. How do I get in here though? If I pick that, would that be like stealing again? If I pick that up. Yep. This is a carrot. So there must be some sort of hidden passage here. Oh well. A flower pot. Let's go to the tailor. Swift. Oh, more books. About months now we don't have that. Rumor has it that a druid of the elemental plane of fire resides in a castle in the blasted lands. Little is known about this fire witch. Wait, we already had that. Wait, is this again the library? Yes, this is the library. There's the tailor. Hi. Um, this is a loom. Can, can I use that on? I've made a fine wool coat. That's good. And some cloth. Hi there, welcome to my little shop. I'm Lindy, the tailor in these parts. Well met, Lindy. You're new to the area. Welcome. Be sure to meet the others. The library is just east of my shop and the mayor a little more. We have a few other merchants as well. You do tailor work? Mostly special orders, and then others use the loom here to make cloth and wool coats. Just bring a few bundles of wool and cotton and feel free to use it. How does that machine operate? It actually, It's actually triggered... No, rigged to an underground spring that runs beneath the town. It's very quick. You can knit the cloth, cloth or coat with a single click on the, of the machine. Thank you, Lindy. Keep warm, friend. So, I happen to have this. Oh.
Okay. So if I happen to come across very cold country, I could use that. It doesn't stack the... Okay, you could go to cliffside, sure. Who are you? Okay, you do that. Weapons, okay. Exotic Weapons Book 1 by Archie of Watercross. The battle-hardened adventurer with a decent amount of skill in melee has little trouble taking out an enemy with a good sword or even a club, especially if he is strong. But what to do if an enemy is just too powerful? What options are there? Bring out the exotic weapons. Various bizarre weapons can be very useful against the red enemy. For example, a dweller has a rock-like skin. In this case, the mighty warhammer will give a plus 3 to any hit, making even a weak person rather strong if he chooses to smashing weapons against that armor. The same weapon is even better against skeletons. Those bones will smash apart with a plus 5 bonus. All these values are in addition to the weapon's normal damage estimates. Ghosts got you down? They move quickly and often vanish. The Bill Gizarm is your friend. This odd weapon has the stopping power of a spear and axe at once, tearing through the ghost with a plus 5 bonus. Its thrusting power is excellent against the spooky orbs also, who are weak uh, but have many hit points. Another plus 5 with the bill on them. One of the oddest weapons is the back the Corbin, a hammer and hook on one end and a big spike on the other. Fire elements will fill the pain of plus 3 when using old Becky on them. The many blades and spikes on the back make quick work of the elemental semi ethereal body, and because of its reach, the nasty thresher sneaking up on you won't see the plus five about to wreck them. See book two for more. Okay. Do you like fire spiders? Probably not. These guys really move. Bring out your flail. Nothing moves faster than a flail, not even fire spiders. Thus one gets a plus 4 bonus when using flail against fire spiders. So what about those golden gazers? They are powerful in many ways, but it's also the weird and wacky glaive. But so is the weird and wacky glaive Gizam. It's got a hook on it, and a dagger-like thing on one end. Gazers don't last long against such a weapon. A plus 3 bonus will down them in short order. Use the glaive on them. Okay, so you got a dozen snake men around you. Yeah. Or you got a terrible wear shade who wants your head. And probably your heart. What to do? Bring out a trident. Oh, come on, you can't expect me to carry around 15 weapons. It is for good reason that this weapon is seen in myth and lore. Sure, you could probably fish with it, but those three pongs and the long reach are pretty darn good against snake men and their many sling stones. They never get a chance to swing it past three sharp pongs, pongs several of which are likely to stick him with a plus five bonus. Snake men are everywhere, so keep that trident handy. Then there's the terrible wear shade. Mighty trident at hand, close on him quickly and stab him with a plus four bonus. If he hits like that, then he's a goner. So, great explorer, be wise. Take the right weapons with you and fight smart, unless you're real good with a deck or your fists, or you're a level 20 superman, it's wise to battle with the right stuff. Archie's got your back, man. I'd rather be good with my fists. Thank you. Talk to him. Oh no, that... Shit. That was not stealing? I could pick that up and it was not stealing? It's a fork. Fork it over. No fuck, I want to talk to him. Hey, come in. Welcome to Archie's. Looking for trouble? Likely. Where else would someone come to a weapons shop? Archie loves. Really though, there's nasty critters out there, so it's best to be, be armed by Archie. Armed by Archie? Yep, I've crafted just about every weapon there is. Weapon you need, my friend. Well, Archie will take care of you, for a price. I mean, a reasonable price, of course. Archie will take care of me? That's my job. 
The weapons chap, they call me. You need a good weapon? You come see Archie. Need ammo? I'm your guy. All at a fair, reasonable, good price. Archie grins. Your prices are reasonable, you say? For the price for safety, pal. Seriously, this stuff is hard to make. I used to shop at the west end of town. I've been into this craft a long time, but I keep prices reasonable. Nasty critters, that's scary. Not with Archie at your command. Arm yourself with, to the hilt with Archie's weapons. Those critters will think twice when they see you armed with something from Archie's. Are the critters afraid of Archie? Rashids and dwellers, ghosts and fire elemental, snake men and fire spiders. All fear those armed with Archie's weapons. Yes, sir, armed by me, they will fear you too. So Archie makes the best stuff? Well, you could try making your own swords. There's a shop on the west end of town. I'll even buy anything you make, but I, Archie, know how to make weapons of quality. You certainly have a lot of weapons here. I could arm an army. I say what I do and I do what I say. Make great weapons. Swords and maces and bow and ammo. Pole arms. Even tridents. It's all yours. For a price. It's hard to decide. Just so much. More seriously, friend, if you're pretty strong, you'll want bigger melee weapons. If you're more the agile type, go for the range stuff. A little of both is good. Why choose one weapon over another? It really comes down what you're good at. I've seen thieves who can hit with a mere knife like a fight over the great sword. The choice is up to you and your skills. I guess you buy stuff as well. Drop it on the block and we'll see. Thanks for everything, Archie. Be careful out there, man. Okay, so I can sell you a few things, for instance, like this dagger. Uh, 50 gold. And how about this flail? Oh, it even says that it's good against fire spiders. And the bow. Buy stones, really? Well, it's ammunition. Oh well. well. Well, you seem to sell them, so you could buy them. It's just a private residence, I don't need to go in there. Okay. Maybe I should do some more digging. Nothing in here. What is that? An orange. Pick that up. So, um, I have 19 of those. Thank you. Let's buy um, a few more of those. I have 17. That's good. Okay, so we've been playing for 45 minutes, so we shall take a break here. And probably continue in the next one. So, thanks for watching, and see you soon. Bye!